Hi, uh, David Jack here, Superintendent of Fauquier County Public Schools. Uh, this, and rather than do one hard question this week, I'm going to be presenting the Budgeting 101 presentation that I presented at the pre-budget hearing, uh, prior to the pre-budget hearing at last night's school board meeting. So this is a rather long presentation, but you can skip through slides if you like. Uh, so uh, away we go. All right, a question comes up every year. Uh, where does the money come from? When you look at a budget, school budget, um, what is the source of funding? So if you look at this slide, you'll notice that 62.2% of our funding comes from the locality, uh, just shy of 35% from the state. Federal is just less than 3%. Other is 0.5%. Is and the other is typically the, that's grant uh, revenues, fees, activity fees, uh, tuition, etc. So that's that's where our money comes from, and that's how we're funded. Okay, so so how's the money spent? Uh, this is the way our um, uh, expenditures break down, and as you can see, instruction is the, is by far the largest uh, percentage, eight percent, uh, 103 million, uh, 492, and uh, that should be the way it is. Um, the majority of our spending should be. In instruction, and just as a as a example, the state recommends that at least 65 percent of your uh, spending go towards instruction, and uh, we're uh, quite a ways ahead of that 65 uh, percent requirement. Although the way the state determines what um, instructional uh, uh, expenditures are, what what are approved instructional expenditures are and how it's typically determined can often be two different things so it's important to keep that in mind but you can see how the different things uh, different categories break down in terms of how much is spent within each category how the state funds public education direct aid to public education is part of or made possible through the appropriations act which was approved by the general assembly long long ago and those funds are administered by the state department of education and they fall into six categories, which are listed for you in the second part of the slide. Uh, standards of quality or SOQ funding, incentive programs, categorical programs, lottery proceeds, supplemental education programs, and federal funds. The largest by far is SOQ funding. SOQ funding represents 88.5% of state funding for K-12. And 83% of that goes towards or is tied to salaries and benefits. So SOQ is by far the largest category. Incentive programs include things like governor's school and some special education programs. Categorical programs include adult ed and literacy, again, additional special, special education services, and our lunch program. Lottery proceeds. Um, lottery proceeds are designated to 20 different programs plus four SOQ accounts. So the lottery funding, the lottery proceeds go to, to go to fund a lot of different things. And the, the four SOQ accounts are textbooks, ESL, which is English as Second Language, Early Reading, and SOL Algebra Readiness. Supplemental education programs include National Board Certification, and teachers receive a, a stipend for being nationally board certified teachers. And there's also a Virginia Teacher Scholarship Loan Program that's funded through the state. And last but not least is federal programs, which include Title I programs, Title VI B, which is special education. Carl Perkins funding, which funding which relates to career and technical education, and USDA, which um, helps fund our school nutrition program. State funds for public education. Uh, that that pie graph there very um, very nicely describes where the state revenues go, and you'll see that education represents about a third. And that is, is historically accurate. In other words, traditionally, the state budget designates roughly a third of its um, revenues to K-12 education. And you can see there in that slide where the rest of the money goes. But one third is, is pretty typical. And that's true within most states. It re usually represents about a third of the state budgets. Standards of quality or SOQ funding, as mentioned in a previous slide, represents the biggest uh, chunk of um, of expenditures for school divisions in terms of the six categories that I mentioned. So, for example, in Fauquier County, the core state budget funding category uh, represents about $43 million. So, 
uh, of the state uh, funding, state support for public education in Fauquier County, 43 million of that, 43 million dollars of that funding is tied to SOQs. And an SOQ is the standard of quality, is the minimum educational program school divisions must provide. And it relates to things like uh, they provide funding, uh, they'll provide funding for one principal for every 600 students and one, uh, one uh, uh, librarian, a media specialist for every 600 students, et cetera. But Fauquier County, like most school divisions, if not all school divisions in Virginia, uh, they fund and support well above the minimum SOQ requirement as established by the state. That's pretty common practice uh, that school divisions provide much uh, at a much higher level or higher rate than is required in terms of the SOQs. Um, but you know, funding for SOQs uh, must be matched. There must be a lo local match, and that local match is determined by your local composite index, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But our local composite index is roughly 0.55, which means uh, about 55% of our of our budget, uh, our overall budget, comes from state funding. And I'll be talking about more about local composite, composite index in, in a minute. But um, that's um, that's a, a very important part of the uh, uh, each every school division's funding uh, mechanism, funding uh, or budget process is the local composite index and the breakdown between how much you receive from the state and how much you receive from your locality. And most of the state funding, as I mentioned, is contained or linked to SOQs. All right, so what is the local composite index? Well, it's complicated, but essentially local composite index of a local ability to pay formula is determined based on three different indicators. One is the true value of real property in the locality, which is weighted at 50%. The Virginia adjust adjusted gross income in the locality, which is weighted at 40%. And the taxable retail sales in the locality, which is weighted at 10%. You take those three pieces, there's a formula attached to it. It's a complicated formula. Um, so I'm very much simplifying it through this presentation. But uh, the state takes those numbers. They, they uh, determine your local composite index, your of ability to pay, and um, it's calculated every two years. So our recalculation will occur next year. So for us, right here in Fauquier County, our local composite index is 0.5586 for the current two-year biennium. That is our, um, that is our LCI. And uh, how, how they arrive at that, uh, again, I've given you the, the very, very, the most simple of explanations, but it is, it gets very complicated in terms of the actual formula that the state uses. What is required local effort? Well, I've just mentioned a little bit about local required effort in the previous slide, um, but it's basically the mandatory minimum local funding as required by the state. And a uh, total local match of state funding required for the locality is based on the local composite index or LCI, which I talked about in a previous slide. And uh, this little formula down below just kind of lays out if we spent $5,706 per student and um, the state was required to put up 0.44% and the local match needed to be 0.55%, that's how it would break down. Other state funding. Uh, again, in, in those categorical areas I mentioned previously, things like incentive programs, which includes technology funding, categorical programs, which includes things like homebound funds, homebound funds, students were all placed on homebound um, for various reasons, medical, etc. School lunch programs, our school lunch program, and um, lottery proceeds. And if you look at those three amounts, when you're looking at, you know, $130 million budget or so, or something around there. Um, that's not a whole lot of money, but um, that's those are other state funding mechanisms and how much we receive. Uh, lottery proceeds are, you know, there there are 20 different categories that lottery proceeds are dedicated to. So uh, it's not a lot of money per program. Although 1.5 million dollars is 1.5 million dollars, when you spread it out over many different programs, uh, it's not not a whole lot of money, especially considering that a lot of it goes towards um, people's salaries and uh, benefits costs. The state budget process, um, it's a, we have a state biennial budget, so we have two-year budgets. 
we are currently in the second half of a biennium budget. Um, the governor, Governor McAuliffe, will present amendments to the current budget December 20th, so the budget may change somewhat uh, through these amendments. The General Assembly will then consider the amendments offered by the governor. Within the House of Delegates, that happens in the House Appropriation Committee. Within the Senate, that happens within the Senate Finance Committee. Then there's a crossover, which basically both houses, they exchange their, their um, amendments and proposals and that goes to conference committee for resolution, for ultimate resolution. Then the governor, it's the budget sent back to the governor for a review and his signature, and then it is enacted into law. But what about Fauquier County, you ask? Um, well, in Fauquier County, the school board doesn't have taxing authority, but the Board of Supervisors does. And revenues in Fauquier County come from general property taxes, other local taxes, permits, fees, etc. Total revenues for 2015, fiscal year 2015, estimated at $136.1 million. In 2015, same fiscal year, support for public education was $80 million, or is $80 million, uh, 800000 And that is uh, represents 59.4% of the total county budget, total county, re county revenues. And again, as I mentioned, that's 60% is typical for most school divisions and localities. Typically, the school division is represents about in that 50 to 60 percent range of the um, local uh, revenues, and uh, but BOS is also responsible for several other other gov governmental functions and agencies: public safety, judi judicial administration, general government, parks and rec, libraries, community development, etc. So there, that's a lot of different programs that need to be funded through um, the county budget, county revenues. How Fauquier funds public education. Um, Fauquier County uh, is the only locality in the state of Virginia that has a two-year budget process. The state, as I mentioned, the state government has uh, a two-year project uh, budget process, but we're the only county that also has a two-year budget process. And uh, this coming year uh, will be the second year of a local biennium budget. So 2016 will be the second half of a current to your budget. And um, for 2016, what was what's projected and what the County uh, Board of Supervisors agreed to was a 0 .007 uh, or 7 tenths of one penny increase uh, to the local uh, tax levy. And um, as a result, for 2000, fiscal year 2016, the uh, schools are, are uh, scheduled to receive an additional $1.3 million uh, in revenues for the school division. The Fauquier County Public Schools budget process, uh, the superintendent's proposed budget is submitted to the school board and that's typically done after the, the, um, the state and the governor approve the state budget. We're in a short session this year because we're in the second year of a, a biennial budget statewide. so. It's not as an intense of a process as it would as it was last year. So once that we receive the, the final state budget, then it's time to submit our budget to our school board, hold a public hearing. Uh, the school board at some point uh, early into next year approves superintendent's proposed budget, and it's submitted to the county administrator. And the county administrator proposes his budget, which is submitted to the board of supervisors. They also hold a public hearing, and they also adopt a budget that appropriates budgets to the locality, to the different agencies within the county, and adopts a tax rate. And then sometime late spring, uh, actually early to late spring, the school board will adopt its final fiscal year budget. So this is our budget timeline, uh, and you can see going from top to bottom in the red, that's the state budget timeline. And then just below is the school board's budget timeline. And then at the bottom, it's the Board of Supervisors, County Administrator's budget timeline. Uh, what we did last year and we'll do again this year, we'll, we'll include a link on the main webpage at www.fcps1.org. There'll be a link on that page to the whole budget process, including this timeline. And those components will be hyperlinked. So, for example, if you go to that timeline and click right on where it says students, superintendent's proposed budget. 
click on that and you'll get you'll go to the presentation that I make to the school board and uh, our tech folks do a good job keeping that updated and it contains a lot of really good information so this presentation very very simplified very much simplified uh, representation of the budgeting process within the state within the county and within the schools uh, but in the interest of time again I've tried to keep it very short but if you want more specific information or have questions feel free to contact me uh, when you like, and I'll do the best I can to answer your questions. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, have a great day.